Hi everyone, this is John with Homeroom Studios at homeroomstudios.com. Today I'm going to be showing you the basics of setting up a virtual instrument track and virtual instrument and recording it into Pro Tools and also doing all the routing. First thing you want to do is open up Pro Tools, a new session, and you want to create an instrument track. So how you do that is you, it's a new track, you can create a mono or a stereo depending on what kind of instrument you do. If you're doing like um, something percussive or maybe like a solo string, you might want mono. But if you're doing something like a pad or a whole keyboard, then you might want um, a stereo instrument track. But again, it depends on the, the piece of music that you're actually composing. So instrument track, stereo mono, and then you click create. I actually have two already made here. So the next thing you want to do is just like with an audio track is route your inputs and outputs. To route your inputs, you click this first tab. And this is where you select whatever MIDI controller you're using. Right now, I'm using a Korg Nano key. Uh, it's a little mini keyboard. If you're using some kind of keyboard as well that's plugged in with a MIDI uh, cable or a USB, it'll probably be here. If so, next, what we want to do is we want to add our virtual instrument. Um, so I'm gonna. I already choose uh, chose expand. How you do that is it's in the plugin pane under instrument, and you choose whatever instrument you want to record. We open up expand, and here's our expand plugin. It's a sampler. Now, right now, if we don't have any output, we play the keys and nothing shows up. We're playing the keyboard and we're not hearing anything. That's because we haven't routed our output yet. Um, our track is receiving the MIDI data, the MIDI commands, but it's not actually sending it anywhere. So, we have to go over here to our output now that we've added our plugin, and we have to choose which plugin we want to send. Um, the commands from our keyboard to. Up here you can see MIDI node expand 2, that's the name of the plugin, 1. So we know that this is expand plugin 1. I have another expand plugin down here. If I open that up, we have expand 2, 2. This is the second one. So you can see which plugin it is up in the top left corner. So we have expand 2, 1. And our sounds are on channel 1. See these channels right here? There's four channels within expand channel 1. So we want to set our output to expand to 1-1. One one. Expand to 1-1. One one. Right there. So now everything's routed. When I play the keys, we should hear something. And there's our C. Okay. Very cool. And now you're all set. Now going a step farther, you can choose different channels within one instance of the plugin. An instance of a plugin is one loaded plugin. So this is one instance of a plugin. This is the second instance of a plugin. Uh, so within one instance, you can have four tracks and four channels. So say I want this evolution pad to be played on a different channel, channel two. Okay, and we'll just turn these off for now. So when I play my keyboard, all I'm hearing is this first plugin, Electric Blown. Oh, sorry, the first instrument. Okay, so, but now I want a different track to play this evolution. So I go to my other instrument track, and I'm going to set this to expand 1-2. So now this instrument track, when I play a key... Let me set up this. When I play a key, it's going to be sending the data to this plugin, channel 2. Okay? It has nothing to do with what track the actual stuff is on. It's different than an audio track. On an audio track, you put an insert on that track, it only works on that track. You know, if you put an EQ on this track, you can't send stuff from this track to the insert on this track. Um, but with virtual instruments, this allows you to actually have multiple instruments, uh, multiple instrument tracks, but using one sampler. So now, now we're on this track. Now we're going to hear that evolution sound. Let's open up the plugins so you can see. When I play, now you see the meter for that channel 2 lighting up. When I click back up to here, now we're going to see channel 1. So that's really cool because now I have what I just recorded on channel 1. Now what I can do is I can layer a uh, a channel 2 sound. I can layer a sound of that evolution pad. It's 
So now I have two sounds. I have two sounds, um, two instrument tracks playing through the same sampler. A lot of people when they're starting out, they'll have like, you know, one instance of the plugin for one sound, and then they'll open up another expand plugin and use it just for one sound like this. And then they'll have another one for another one sound. And they have all these blank tracks here that they could be using, and their their CPU and their computer is just hating them for putting that much processing on it. So this fader, the actual track fader, will not control the volume for um for this sound. Okay? You have to use the faders within the sampler. And then this fader for the main track will actually control the volume for the overall for all these tracks, like a master fader for this whole plugin. So I usually leave this at Unity and I control all my levels for my virtual instruments going through the sampler with these faders and with these pan knobs. That's why they're there. Okay, so that covers the basics of setting up a virtual instrument track and routing it uh, internally within Pro Tools so that you can get multiple sounds uh, and maximize your CPU usage. The next issue I'm going to address came from a viewer. I handled the issue privately within an email, um, but after handling the issue, I felt that you know it's a common problem that a lot of people go through when they're first starting out with MIDI. I went through it and I had trouble with it. I kind of figured it out on my own. Um, so I thought it'd be helpful to actually do a video and address this issue. The issue that was brought up is that if you have a plugin like Expand or Sampler plugin and you're using every track on one channel, so you're using all four of these channels for one patch sound. Let's turn them all on. So you're using all four of these tracks, there you go, <laughs> for one, uh, one patch sound. What happens if you need more? You know, so I got this pa patch that I made here. Doesn't sound too good, but whatever. Um, what if I want a fifth sound? I want to layer some more with it. I want to beef it up some more. I don't want to have to you know, re-record the part. Well, the the easiest solution, or one of the, actually, they're both pretty easy, but one of the solutions is that all you need to do is copy your MIDI track. So copy your MIDI track down onto another instrument track. And from there, open up another expand. Make sure you route it correctly. Expand 2, 1. So now we're expand 2, channel 1. And now this track here will play the new part. And this track up here will play what's coming through here. So now you have the same the same part that you played, now you have four more sounds that you can layer with it. That's one way to do it. But that way you but when you do that you have to copy the MIDI data and there is a way that's a lot easier where you don't have to copy uh, the MIDI notes. Where you can use the same MIDI track, the same part you recorded, but just send these MIDI notes and those controls to more than one um, instance of the plugin at once. And it's a keyboard shortcut that's commonly used uh, with audio. It's holding down shift and control on a Mac. And when you do that, it actually allows you to send route something to more than one place. But it's important that you put the second expand plugin on a new instrument track. It doesn't work if you put two expand plugins on one track. So you make a new instrument track, open up a second expand. Um, this routing has nothing to do with what you're doing, so you can actually put none there. You know, you don't have to worry about that. And then what you're going to do is you're actually going to route this output to more than one spot. So right now you have it going to expand one, channel one, but now you also want it to go to expand two, channel one. And if you just click expand two, channel one, it'll just route it to expand two, channel one. And that's not what you want. You want it to go to both. So let's click expand one, channel one. Now you're going to hold down shift and control. And while you're holding down, keep holding it down, click the tab, go to expand two, channel one, and there you go. It's all set. You see a plus come up in the corner right next to expand. That means that that output is being sent to more than one spot. If you hold down your mouse there, you can actually sh it shows you where they're being sent. So we see that we're sending um, these MIDI notes to expand two, one, one, and expand two, two, one. If you click here, you can see, expand one, channel one, expand two, channel one. So we're all set. So now when we play our part back, we see volume um, and signal on both channels. And if we actually look at the plugin, we see that that one's getting signal and being played. We hear it. 
then we open up our very first expand and we see that all four of these are being played as well. So now we have four more four more tracks that we can mess with um, in this patch. So now this allows you to make very big and elaborate patches. So there you go. I hope that answered any questions that you might be having uh, concerning virtual instruments within Pro Tools and its routing and how you set them up. Uh, once again, I'm John with Homeroom Studios at homeroomstudios.com. Check out my blog. It's homeroomrecording.blogspot.com. Uh, if you have any questions regarding this topic or any other topics, please uh, shoot me a message. I'll be happy to answer your questions. And if I feel it's a topic that can benefit a lot of other people that's a common problem, then I will do a video like I just did uh, on that topic. So please shoot me an email. Uh, I always love to hear your feedback and your questions. Thanks.